Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Spirit of Justice. I... I think this is, um... I think this is probably gonna be the last video for this, uh, for this case, because we are pretty damn close to the end now and getting corner- and cornering uh, Mr. Radies. We just gotta prove how he was able to commit the crime even though he wasn't at the scene. Ho ho ho, behold, my never-ending magic show. Come for the awe-inspiring showsmanship of the great Mr. Rias. And stay for my grand illusion until the end of time. Ha 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 ha! I don't know what that was. Sorry. I was expecting a ha 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 ha. I didn't realize he went ha first. Wait, is he saying that we're still trapped inside some sort of illusion of his? Probably. That's what professional magicians do. They make their audiences see something that isn't really there. In other words, you make us see illusions, right? We call it misdirection. While we keep you busy believing one thing, we're busy making something else happen. What we say is there really isn't, and what we say isn't there actually is. Could it be? You know what, Mr. Ratings? I guess we have all been spectators to the elaborate illusion you've prepared for us. An illusion that has subtly turned our attention towards something you wanted us to see. What are you going on about, lad? Have you got something, Apollo? I just remember something Trucy said about misdirection. What a magician says is there really isn't. What a magician says is there really isn't, and what they say isn't there actually is. If we've all been taken for a ride by Mr. Rating's magic, then maybe he's made us see something that wasn't really there. It's time to rethink all of my assumptions about this case. What have we been made to believe was there when it actually wasn't? What have we taken to be the, the absolute facts of this case? If I reevaluate the validity of all of these things, then just maybe. Athena? There's something uncanny about this case. Okay, what is it? Ratings alibi. It's too perfect. Well, that's true. It's like it's impossible to break no matter how hard we try. But maybe that's the trick. Maybe that's exactly what he wants us to think. Um, I'm not following. We're not making any headway here because we've been so focused on breaking his alibi. Oh, I think I get it. You're saying he's using misdirection on us, right? It's definitely a possibility. Ahem, would the defense care to share with everyone what it's discussing over there? Your Honor, we believe that if we were to reconsider a certain assumption, we may finally arrive at the truth. In fact, I think we'll even finally see who's hiding behind the curtain, so to speak. Hmm, and what is this certain assumption you're thinking of? This is the one key assumption we've been taking for granted this whole time. Uh, whoops. The culprit was on scene. What if the culprit was somewhere other than the theater at the time of the crime? What if there was some way to commit the murder without actually being there? If that were the case, then Mr. Rating's perfect alibi would become irrelevant. Objection. How could one person stab another to death with a sword without physically being there? Furthermore, we all saw what appears to be the culprit's shadow in the footage. But couldn't we just as easily assume that the shadow does not belong to the culprit? Well, if it's not the culprit, then whose is it? I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track. We've all seen something that looks like this shadowy shape before, Your Honor, during the magic show itself. In that case, please point it out in the show footage for us. This is the thing that looks suspiciously similar to the shadowy figure of the culprit. Ugh, back to the video.
Okay, make sure you move your cursor now, because that's the key point here. Doesn't this shadow resemble the suspicious shadowy figure? Hmm, now that you mention it, it does, doesn't it? Miss Wright, could you identify this shadow for the court? Let's see... I believe that's Mr. Hat's shadow. It's from when he's being pulled up from the stage to the catwalk overhead by wire. Then could this shadow that's shown later in the footage be Mr. Hat too? No, that's not possible. After Mitt was, Mr. Hat was pulled up to the catwalk, he stayed up there. In other words, this second shadow is from some f other figure being pulled up. Some other figure? I'm afraid you'll need to be more specific than that, Mr. Justice. He's right. We've come this far. I'll just have to figure it out from the clues I have on hand. What is the second shadow shown in the footage? Uh, let's look at the crime photo, because if you look, if you remember, Mr. Rias had a little noose on his back. If we consider what was happening on the stage at the time, there's only one answer. The shadow belonged to the fake Mr. Rias. In other words, Mr. Man of Mystery. The victim? Please, take a look at the prank's plan script. Mr. Mystery was to pretend to be dead and then fly up into the air after that. Isn't that right, Mr. Ratings? Indeed. And what of it? I contend that that's exactly what happened. The victim was wearing a stunt harness around his waist. It was also most it was most likely attached to a stunt wire so he could be pulled up into the air. So you're suggesting that after pretending to be dead in the coffin, the victim flew up into the air just as the prank script says? Exactly. We just couldn't see him go flying up because the dragon was blocking our view. And that last trick, ladies and gentlemen, is the true piece de resistance of the culprit's murderous magic show. You're sweating bullets! <clears throat> Don't tell me! You've got it all figured out? Yes, I think so. If we can just look beyond Mr. Rating's last bit of misdirection, we should finally be able to see the real truth. The victim must have been pulled up to the catwalk, just like Mr. Hat. And hit the cushioning up there with a considerable force. I just have to figure out what else happened up there at that time. Are you ready to elaborate, Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor. I'm ready. In that case, please answer me this. Why did the culprit make the victim fly up into the air like that? To falsify an alibi, to murder him, to hide the body. To murder him. Just why did the culprit have the victim fly up after he appeared in the coffin? And how did the victim actually die? When he was only pretending to be dead in the coffin. If we can figure out how these two questions relate, the answer should become clear. Could it be? Mr. Mystery must have thought he was, he was still just part of a prank when he appeared on stage. He probably didn't suspect a thing as he was being pulled into the air, after Miss Wright was called backstage and just as the set piece fell. But the culprit had already planted the real murder weapon in the cushion of the catwalk. It was probably a knife or blade of some sort. What? You mean... Yes, it really was a magical murder. Just as the prank script said, Mr. Mystery was whisked up into the air. And straight into a blade, there in the catwalk. In other words, this murder was committed remotely through the use of a magic trick. What? Remotely? Using this method, it would matter where Mr. Ratings was at the time of death. <laughs> yeah. We got you now, Mr. Ratings. But how exactly does it work, Mr. Justice? <gasps> 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 
I like how they reintroduced the 3D effects from the Apollo Justice game just before the murder occurred. Thankfully, we don't have to point anything out. But this is very nostalgic. The Dragon Piece set was up on the catwalk. It and Mr. Man of Mystery were connected to each other by a wire at the time. By carrying out the prank plan, Betty made the dragon set f piece fall. Which caused Mr. Mystery to rocket straight up. And into the blade in the cushion. The cushion was high up enough to be hidden from the audience's view. That's why nobody saw the blade. Ugh. Oh, then that big gash on Mr. Hat's cape! That blade must have been set up overhead sometime before the magic show. Mr. Hat must have been slashed by it, too, when he was pulled up to the cushion. Hold it! I can't believe it. I, I had no idea. I, I was told that Trucy would freak out if I made the set piece fall. That's the only reason I did it. You are used, Betty. Roger Ratings used you. I, I, I thought he was my little puppet to boss around, but it was the other way around. After the incident occurred, Mr. Ratings arrived at the theater. He got the murder weapon and swapped the rubber sword with the bloody steeled one. That's also when he lowered the victim's body down to the stage. But how did he have time to do all that? When the set piece failed, the audience was ev evacuated from the building. He was able to do all those things after the fact because there was no one around to see. A horrific murder camouflaged by a spectacular magic show. That sounds like the kind of murder only a magician could pull off. As long as the show proceeds as it was scripted, Mr. Mystery was doomed to die. That's why it was you, Mr. Ratings, who killed the victim all the way from the TV station. This prank plan, or should I say murder plan, proves your murderous intent. Yeah! Grimari! Sakurai Mao Mando no Samashi de Tashi no Ketare Gase o Soroka! Enough! You dim witted, ignorant, imbecilic, putrid red pepper. <laughs> you can't possibly have a counter argument to make. Talk about not knowing when to let it go and move on. Um, do you have a rebuttal or something, Prosecutor Samadhi? No blade of any kind was found in the catwalk, which means you have no evidence to support your theory. But Mr. Ratings retrieved it after the fact. All conjectures, I'm sure. Which, is, which still leaves you with no way to prove your wildly fantastic remote murder theory. But, without proof, does it not make more sense to believe that the murder was committed there on the stage? That that's where the bloodstained sword was found, after all. Hmm, that is a very good point. As the only person who could have committed the crime there on that stage. Trucy Wright remains the prime suspect. <laughs> it would appear that what you call truth is little more than a cheap parlor trick. In the end, you have done nothing to prove the accused innocence. It is time at last to let it go and move on. <laughs> We're so close. <laughs> Are you seeing this, Magnifique Grimari? My magic is exacting punishment on your granddaughter. The Grimari name is done for. Apollo, we need to hit them with a decisive piece of evidence here. I know, that's just what I was thinking. Mr. Justice, do you or do you have anything, or don't you have anything, to prove that the witness committed this remote murder you proposed? 
Of course I do, Your Honor. This entire incident was carried out exactly according to the script. Right, so theoretically there should be no evidence for us to find or use. Which means our best bet is to see if something unscripted happened. There's gotta be something Redness couldn't have foreseen. And once I find it, that's how I expose this murderous trick. Get ready, Mr. Ratings, because I'm about to reveal the secret to your magic. There's no tricks or gimmicks here. Just some good old-fashioned logic. Uh, I forgot the name of this mechanic, but we're doing this thing! As long as the magic show went as scripted, the murder wouldn't ha would happen without fail. Everything in this case was carefully planned, so that no evidence would be left behind. Still, one thing happened that definitely wasn't in the plan. What part of the magic show wasn't part of the show's original script? Bonnie's mistake. Bonnie made a mistake during Trucy's escape trick. Which mistake did Bonnie make during the magic trick? Her life choices! I know that's not it, but... No, no, I should never say a person's life choices are a mistake. I'm sure she can be a great magician someday if she works hard at it. Ah, Good luck, Barney. Anyway, getting back to the case. What was it that Bonnie did during Trucy's escape trick? What mistake did Bonnie make during the magic trick? Mr. Hat's positioning. Because Bonnie placed Mr. Hat to the right of the coffin instead of to the left, Trucy had to reappear on the side of the coffin opposite to the one in the show's script. But the, but the culprit didn't know that when they first arrived at the theater, which means he was bound to make a slip-up when he tampered with the crime scene. Which part of the culprit's cover-up attempt was affected by Trucy's new positioning? Blood in the coffin hole. Or, yes. Yes, blood. Thinking Trucy had appeared on the left, the culprit must have put the blood in the left left hole. But the blood was apparent was eventually discovered in the right hole during the police investigation. If the killer had originally put the blood on the left side, that means he must have tampered with the scene again afterwards to make it line up with the facts. To make the crime scene consistent with the facts, the culprit must have swapped the coffin sides. Culprit swapped the coffin sides. That's right. The left and right panels of the coffin are interchangeable. The culprit must have switched the two panels to make the bloodstain fit the facts. But the switch might have also given rise to something unnatural. Oh, I remember now. There was something unnatural about the coffin, and it's just the evidence I need. Really awkward front face 3D sprite animation thing here. Jeez, that looks awful. Sorry, Mr. Ratings, but I have some very conclusive proof of your guilt. Another bluff, is it? There's no way you have anything of that kind. My magic is real. No. Nope. Shut up for a second. No. There are tricks and gimmicks to it, just like any other illusion. Wh what After the murder, you switched the left and right panels of the coffin, didn't you? Gah! And because you did, you left behind something very unnatural for us to find. This proves that Roger Ratings tampered with the crime scene after the murder took place. Uh, fingerprint results, where are they? The fingerprinting results? What about the fingerprints is unnatural? Let's take a look at the prints the victim left inside the coffin, shall we? If the victim was facing forward in the coffin, his prints should have looked like this. However, what we found was... They were facing the opposite direction. It's quite unnatural for the prints to be facing this way, wouldn't you agree? Ah! It is strange, isn't it? But how did it get this way? They got this way because the culprit thought the magic show had gone according to script. The culprit thought Mr. Hat would be on the left side of the coffin. 
and that Mr. Miss Wright would also pop up to the left of the coffin as per the show's script. He then assumed she had thrust the sword into the hole on the left side of the coffin. That's why he put the blood in the left hole when he was trying to cover up his crime. But sometime after leaving the bloodstain, the culprit must have realized his mistake. He found out that, due to Bonnie's mistake, Mr. Hat was to the right of the coffin. And that, despite the script, Miss Wright had thrust the sword into the hole on the right. In short, the hole with the blood in it was on the, uh, the side opposite the one that Trissy used. To make the blood location fit the facts, he had to tamper with the evidence yet again. So he tried to cover his tracks by switching the coffin's left and right panels. Oh, and that's how the fingerprints in the coffin end up backwards. Because the culprit switched the two sides panels around. The prints ended up facing the opposite direction. But instead of going to all that trouble with the panels, why did the culprit just wipe the blood away and redo it on the other side? It's a thing called luminal. I'm afraid that wouldn't have worked, Your Honor. Because of a little something called luminal testing. Ah, right! Luminal! I almost forgot. Luminal can detect trace amounts of blood, even if it's been wiped away, right? That's right. Wiping the blood away would have only served as proof of his meddling. How about it, Mr. Ratings? I did a pretty good job figuring out your trick, didn't I? <sighs> Trucy Wright could have done the same just as easily. You have no proof that it was this witness who tampered with the evidence. Let it go! Ah, but I do have proof. What? A person who was in the magic show would never have made the mistake of putting the blood on the wrong side. Least of all, Miss Wright, who surely would have remembered she was on the other side. Oh my, you're absolutely right! <sighs> Why, you impotent. I'm sure you've realized by now, Prosecutor Zamahi, that your claim that Miss Wright is the culprit just doesn't hold up. <laughs> you and the accused are most certainly... Really, Miss Wright and I? Because I think you're the one with a the ticket there for trying to convict an innocent girl. He got you there! <sighs> uh, uh. Oh, what a pretty attack. <laughs> Down goes the prosecutor. Pro prosecutor Shivani, are you alright? As for the true culprit, he is someone who knew how the show was supposed to go but didn't actually see it. And someone who had the chance to tamper with the crime scene after the incident. And the only person who fits the bill... ...is you, Roger Ratings. Kramari! All of the secrets to your tricks have been revealed. And with no tricks left, I'm afraid your show has been cancelled. Permanently! <laughs> All of my secrets have been revealed, you say? Don't make me laugh, boy. Mine is the true, real magic. There are no secrets to reveal. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, the true power of the great Mr. Rias. Witness a magic far greater than Troop Grimari's. Burn. Crumble. Fail, fall to my furious flames. The great Mr. Rias. We'll bring an end to you all! And now, for the final hair to the Grimari name! Right here, right now! You two! Shall br- Huh? No, this isn't right! Ah! Ah! No! I didn't do anything wrong! No! It's not my fault! I'm not the one to blame! I'm the victim here! Ah! What? Ah! Ah! Stop! No! Ah! Curse you, Grimari! 
I love that breakdown. Woohoo! There he goes. He just became one heck of a whack job there. My favorite breakdown in this game is this one. Curse those Grimaris! It's all... it's all because of them. Even now they wound me. Curse them all to the abyss! Whew! Do you really hate us that much? Does your hatred run that deep? Deep enough to kill an innocent man? You damn right! You have no idea what humiliations I had to suffer! Your grandfather, Magnifique Grimari, kicked me out after I got hurt practicing my magic. He said I was too unskilled, that I would mess up on stage. He threw me out of the troop just because he was worried about his own reputation! Since I was but a child, it was always my dream to become a great magician. That Magnifi! He took it all from me! But... that's no excuse! That's no reason to do something so evil! Magic is supposed to make people happy, not used as means for murder. What's the big deal? I just used what I had available to me, that's all. I get it now. That attitude toward magic is why my grandfather kicked you out. You... You don't deserve to call yourself a magician. Ooh. Don't deserve? I don't know about that. After all, you were all completely taken in by my magic, were you not? If not for that lawyer over there, you would be on your way to prison as we speak. You're right. I didn't see through your tricks. You see, so in the end, Trip Grimari was defeated by the great Mr. Rias. <laughs> You're not fit to lecture me from on high, Trucy Wright. You don't even deserve to call yourself a magician, you naive greenhorn. Don't take that, Trucy! <laughs> take that, Grimari! You lose! Checkmate. If anyone needs to learn to let it go and move on, it's this guy. <laughs> oh, stop laughing already. This court and my prison can both burn in the flames of my creation. <laughs> Bailiff, take Mr. Raitness away and bring a fire extinguisher just to be safe. He needs to chill. It looks like we've reached the end. I feel as though I've been watching a grand magic show. It was close, but we just barely made it through somehow. Huh? Why does Trucy look so down? Miss Wright! Yes, Your Honor? I'm about to announce your, my verdict. Could I see that wonderful smile of yours? That smile of a true entertainer, as I do. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Trucy Wright. Not guilty! Confetti! Woo! Court is...
is adjourned. Thank you for everything, Polly. Oh, Trissy, gracias de all. I don't... Whatever. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know foreign languages. Now you can open your show tomorrow, just as planned. But how without Mr. Rias? Yep, and it's all thanks to you, too. Oh, but now that Mr. Rias is say. gone, I'll need to find somebody to replace him. Uh, Apollo does not have any magic experience, so no. I don't like the way she's looking at me. Trucy, I'm so sorry about everything. Hey, what are you apologizing for? Roger Raiden's used us. We're victims too. He even made me an accomplice to murder. But Betty, we have to take some of the blame for this too, you know? Even if we didn't know he was planning to kill Mr. Mystery, we did cooperate with him. It's... it's all my fault, isn't it? Neither one of you is to blame. The only one in the wrong is the person who used magic to commit murder, Roger Rettens. <laughs> Don't you think I know that? Say what you want, but don't think for a second that... that I don't still hate you. Aw, oh, Betty. I think Betty's just a Sundere. Baka. Uh, I guess she really does hate me. But, Betty, why? You used to be a huge fan of Trucy's. Hey, hey! Shut up! I I've always hated her! Yep, a Sundere. <laughs> really? But if we hadn't seen Trucy's magic show, we never would have tried becoming professional magicians ourselves, right? S speak for yourself! But, Betty, you still have her autograph from the- GRRRR! Just shut up! Was she acting that way this whole time because she secretly loves Trucy? Wow, Trucy, I never knew that being the best could be so tough. Come on, Bonnie, we're leaving. We have to get ready for tomorrow's show. <laughs> You're really excited about performing with Trucy again, aren't you? Th that's not true, so zip it, dummy! Polly? Do you think I really am a naive greenhorn? No? Huh? No way. She's not. After all, you were completely taken in by my magic, were you not? If not for that lawyer over there, you would be on your way to prison as we speak. You're right. I didn't see through your tricks. You see? So in the end, Trip Grimari was defeated by the great Mr. Rias. <laughs> You're not fit to lecture me from on high, Trucy Wright. You don't even deserve to call yourself a magician, you naive greenhorn. Trucy, don't tell me you're taking what uh, what Rady said to heart. Well, maybe a little. I didn't see through his tricks and I let myself be taken in by his magic. I... I can't trust myself anymore. Trissy, no! Maybe he was right to call me a greenhorn. You shouldn't take stock in his words. He doesn't even know the first thing about you. Huh? You're a wonderful Grimari magician. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you, Apollo. But what makes you say that? I know you're a wonderful Grimari magician because of this. Send in the notebook. My grandfather's notebook? The Grimari's Creed. 
A true entertainer always keeps a smile on their face. When you perform your magic trick in court today, you showed the world your dedication to your troop's creed. Even through all the jeering, you kept a smile on your face and won the crowd over. You are everything Magnavi could have hoped for in a, in a hair. You're a great magician, uh, Trucy. I I flubbed that line. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a great magician? Me? You really are. That's why you don't have to worry about what rating said. Oh, Polly, thank you. Still, I couldn't have done it without you. I would have lost my nerve if I'd been up there alone. But I was able to keep on smiling because of you. Somebody please tell these two already. Me? I remembered what you said to me in the detention center. After all, you're sure, you're sure you swapped the swords, right? Yes, I remember doing it. Then I just know it wasn't your fault, Trucy. But how can you say that? We don't have any proof it wasn't me. I, I mean, I know you're a great lawyer, Polly, but... I believe in you, Trucy. And I believe in your skill as a professional magician. So I'm going to prove your innocence. Don't worry, you're going to be fine. Your words were what kept me going. Apollo. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now I can be everything I was meant to be. Juicy's real smile is the best. Oh, somebody tell these two! I'm so glad I could help make that happen. Um, Emma? I'm really sorry, Trucy, for everything. But why? Well, I wasn't able to convince Prosecutor Samadhi what a good person you are. And I had to testify against you, too. You have nothing to apologize for. You were just doing your job. Y you're too kind. Oh, I don't know about... Uh-huh. Is something wrong, Emma? Oh! Uh, uh, hello? Prosecutor Samahi? What are you doing here? Detective Sky. Y yes I require your forensic ep expertise in order to close this case. Come, let us go. Wait, Prosecutor Sumahi! The trial is over, Mr. Justice. You and I are strangers once more, with no further need to interact. Strangers? Have you really forgotten all about me? What is this, Phoenix Wright meeting Edgeworth? What? You've really changed, Nayuda. Telling me to let it go and stuff? What happened to you? Oh, lawyer of impure soul. I have nothing to say to the likes of you. Are you serious, Nayuda? Now, if you will excuse me. Okay, fine. Don't tell us anything. There he goes. What was that all about, Apollo? How do you know Prosecutor Samahi? Uh, let's just say we're old acquaintances. Uh-huh. Acquaintances? It seemed like something more than that. Y yeah well... You don't like to talk about your past, do you? Because you always change the subject. I, uh... I guess I'll have to talk about it someday. But for now, come on, let's forget about the past and celebrate Trucy's future. Sure, if you say so. Hey, it's Mr. Wright! Put him on speakerphone, Apollo!
What's up, Mr. Wright? Uh, Apollo! How's Trucy? What happened at the trial? Did you get a not guilty verdict? Mr. Wright, slow down. Everything's fine. Hi, Daddy. I'm okay now. She was found not guilty in a very dramatic turnabout. Plus, we saved the office. It was a great victory for Apollo. Whew. That's a load off my mind. I can't thank you enough, Apollo. Now I know I can trust you to hold down the fort anytime. Me? Really? Yes, you. You're a real full-fledged lawyer now, in my eyes. Oh yeah, it only took like two games for him to ignore him. <laughs> a full-fledged lawyer? I still can't wrap my mind around it. Me either. <laughs> thank goodness you were there to take care of everything. And thank you, Apollo. No need to go that far, boss. Especially not in front of everyone. Oh, and by the way... I won't be able to make it to tomorrow's show, so I was hoping you could go. You'll do that for me, won't you? Of course! I wouldn't miss it for the world! Whew! Full-fledged... So Daddy asked you to come to tomorrow's show, huh? As my assistant, right? Um, no, he just asked me to go cheer you on. Okay, then I'll be sure to save you the best seat in the house, Polly. The best seat in the house? I really appreciate the thought, but... Good, then it's settled. I should have known. <laughs> the best scene in the house! Would of course be on stage. That this is what she meant! Magical girl Trucy Wright will now perform her greatest illusion yet. There are no tricks or gimmicks here, ladies and gentlemen. This is real magic. Wait a minute, you're kidding, right? There is a trick or gimmick, right? I'm too young to die! Now then, Mr. Hat, you know what to do with that sword. No! Wait! Stop! No! <laughs> Poor Apollo! And that is how Trucy and Grey Maryland ended on a rousing high note. With a big round of applause and Polly's ear-splitting screams. What kind of an ending is that? Ah, uh, Apollo. Can't have good times all the time. And we finished! Awesome! We can now move on to the third case. Uh, I have to be honest, I think the strongest case, ironically enough, is probably case two and three of this game, which is usually not the case with Ace Attorney games, but I find them very solid. Um, which we'll, uh, see the, uh, case three in the next video. Uh, because we're out of time, and I guess we're over at this point. But you get my thing! See you guys then! Bye bye